Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Dale with Dale's Leatherworks, and I have some exciting announcements to talk about today. First and foremost, I was gonna talk about the Stitch Down Patina Thunderdome. This year is the third annual Stitch Down Patina Thunderdome, and I'm happy to observe that it only seems to be growing over the years, and I think it's a really, a really healthy event, I think, in a lot of ways. A, it brings the boot community together. It keeps the interest alive. This hobby isn't something that's stagnant. I think boot enthusiasts deserve a community. I think Ben at Stitch Down has done a wonderful job building up this boot cult, uh, uh, boot community, I should say. Really, uh, with the interest, so does the industry survive and progress and uh, develop itself. New innovations come out, new understandings about different leathers come out. People get smarter, people get more savvy. Just everything is better as a result. You get more options, there are more makers, and I think that's absolutely wonderful. I'm going to be talking about my Stitch Down Patina Thunderdome pair today. These are my Trumans in Natural Horse Rump. I literally got these in May of 2022. I just realized I'm not wearing my new cuffs. Hold on, let me go get those. Okay, got my cuffs on. Hazel Sedgwick cuffs. More on Hazel Sedgwick in a moment. But yeah, so these things were so damn beautiful. They sat in the box for literally a year and a year and a half. I just started wearing them this week and uh, the patina is already coming along. It's absolutely beautiful. So I, I designed these. Uh, these are on the Truman 20 last, my favorite last of theirs. It's so beautiful, so roomy, so generous in the forefoot. It's got an absolutely flawless 260 degree storm welt. This is a dream boot for me, a dream pair of boots. It's all natural, so the patina is, it's gonna show off its patina very well. Another thing I always talk about Truman, they use the best speed hook eyelets. I don't know why more boot makers don't use these really robust, thick brass speed hooks, but Truman is one of the only ones that I see using them. Actually, they're on my Nicks and Whites as well, So, but the Pacific Northwest makers are some of the few that do that. So anyways, rawhide laces, nice contrasting brown tongue, which goes very well with my brown belt that I actually made for myself, and that's gonna seg me, segue me into the next topic of discussion, belts uh, that I'm now making. But before I get to those, Ben is now allowing you to dome two pairs of boots, and I keep getting questions as what when I'm gonna start wearing these custom craft boots. These custom craft are going to be my second dome entry for a couple reasons. A, Dennis is a super duper cool dude. He's right up there, in my opinion, with creosote. I would say that if you're if you take a look at his boots and you want to get a bespoke boot made for you, then hit him up before his list gets too long because he's one of these single independent makers that is new, fresh to the scene and his list is growing. Uh, thankfully, the only reason I have these boots is because of my buddy Mario. He actually had these made and uh, I was sending him pictures back and forth. Mario wears about a nine and a half, whereas I wear an eight and a half. Mario is about a full size larger than me. And as you can see, these boots, they are extremely wide, but they're not very long, and uh, I was sending him pictures, fit pictures, and uh, basically these, you know, the Trumans on the 20 last are a perfect fit for me, and these custom craft are shorter. So basically Mario wouldn't, if, if I sent him these, he wouldn't even be able to get his feet in there. So uh, Mario and I worked out a deal, and uh, so I kept these and I will be wearing these, so huge thanks to Mario. Without you, sir, this would not have happened. Uh, both Dennis and I appreciate it greatly. I have not worn these yet, but I'm about to. This is in a really rich uh, russet color leather from a tannery called Cobell Leather Tannery. And it's just some of the gnarliest, coolest leather I have ever seen. It's so stiff. It's veg tanned, I could tell. Very supportive all throughout, like very well structured not a flimsy boot whatsoever. And yeah, I did a review on these if you want more information on these, but when I did the review, I didn't know that I'd be keeping them. So this will be my second dome entry. So between these two, I'm basically gonna be religiously wearing these on and off. I'm gonna be putting a an honest hurting on them, I'll say. I'm not gonna destroy them. You know, some people 
they go out there and they, they really try to wreck this stuff. That's not what the judges are looking for. The judges are looking for an honest patina. And so my recommendation for that, for bringing out a really honest patina, is wear these things in the rain. Wear them in the rain, let them, let them air dry in the room. That'll really bring out a dramatic patina over time. But yeah, don't rush it. Enjoy it. Use them, use them as they're intended. I think the key is gonna be consistency. And then not to mention, each leather is gonna patinate just a little different from one to the next. And these are obviously two completely different builds, two completely different lasts. We got a leather sole on these, which I'm excited about. So I'm excited to give this a good second go. This is my second time. I didn't enroll in the second Patina Thunderdome. A, because it was kind of like, it felt kind of rushed. like. I couldn't believe the six months was already over. <laughs> and uh, yeah, B, you know, it was, uh, I was getting Dale's Leatherworks kicked off at the time and I was just sort of overwhelmed. And uh, the Stitch Down community, uh, it, was, it was just kind of overwhelming with everything combined at, at the same time. So anyways, but I am gonna be back for the third and I do plan to stay. I do plan to do this every year, I think. I think, like I said, I think it's a healthy thing, you know, not to be in it to win it, but to be in it for the, participation for the journey for the involvement for the engagement alone that that's worth it like forget the incentives like the community engagement is going to be worth it we're building up we're building up a family is the way i look at it so exciting announcement for dale's leather works so i have been prototyping a lot of belts i've ordered leather belt blanks a belt blank is basically a strip of leather that is intended to be converted into a belt. So yeah, I've ordered, I, I spent probably a thousand dollars last month <laughs> on different belt leathers, on different buckles, on so many things. I'm trying to develop out my own line of belts. And uh, it's, it's stressful, I am not gonna lie, it is stressful. You have so many options when it comes to belts. There's so many moving parts. So I ordered leather, I ordered Wicket and Craig, both harness and bridle leather. I ordered Sedgwick leather, a bunch of Sedgwick blanks from Buckle Guy. But most of it I got from Maverick leather, and some of it's really good. Specifically, the Wicket and Craig harness I like. I actually don't like the bridle. The, this is the bridle. I actually don't really, I don't like it as much. I mean, it's, it's good, but uh, I don't need to get into all of it. But long story short, I got a lot of different leather, a lot of different buckles, a lot of different hardware. Frankly, most of it just I don't like. A lot of this stuff is good, but it's not great. And uh, I've long sort of followed my buddy Isaac at Pigeon Tree Crafting. I've always said he makes the best belts, and he still does. He makes the best belts, 100%. And so I was kind of nervous to get into belts because I'm friends with Isaac, and I don't want to compete with him. I don't want to take money out of his pocket. I see my buddy Phil at Ashen Leather. He's doing belts. His main thing is wallets, but he also does belts. And then I see most leather makers, they offer belts. Uh, so kind of feel like I need to start doing my own. So after testing all kinds of hardware, I'm t this whole thing's filled with buckles. I mean, some of these buckles are cool, but they're just not up to my standard personally. I settled on these two. This is a quick release buckle from Buckle Guy. Their standard uh, generic sort of quick release buckle. I just, I love the look of them. Uh, I have a lot from, like I said, Pigeon Tree Crafting. Isaac has his own uh, forger now. He's got his own proprietary stamped uh, keepers and hardware and stuff. I don't. I'm just literally buying the hardware from Buckle Guy and putting this stuff together. But yeah, so I settled on two different models and uh, of all the leathers I tried yeah unfortunately I'm not I'm mean this I'm not trying to copy Isaac at all but really he's been doing this for so long and he's right about what he offers on his website I'll leave a link to his website in the description below like I said I'm not I'm not trying to step on his toes or compete with him in any way but I'm just trying to make the best belts I can kind of like my buddy Wyatt Gilmore at Grantstone says, we're just trying to make the best boots we can. I'm just trying to make the best belts we can. And if I'm being honest, like Isaac has discovered the best stuff to make belts with. He also has a relationship with uh, different tanneries and stuff. I'm just buying what's like basically available to buy now. Uh, I don't have relationships with any makers yet. I don't know of any good like forgers. Like if I could, I'd love to meet somebody 
and strike up a deal with somebody that could make me my own buckles of my design. But for now, I'm just sort of, you know, I even, I'm friends with some metal workers. They don't even know where to tell me to go to get stuff like this. So I'd really be interested if you guys could let me know in the comments below, if you know anybody who does metalworking that I could order and design raw brass buckles through, I would love that. That would be a huge help to me. I could, you know, put my own spin on it. And that way it's even more exclusive of a product. But for now, I'm offering a quick release and I'm offering this center heel bar buckle belt. The quick release is going to be called the Marauder belt. And what I do is, yeah, we've got this raw brass quick release buckle in here, as well as a, I believe these are number nine rivets, the thickest rivets that I can find. And then as well as this raw brass keeper here, this is in Hazel Sedgwick. I ordered an entire side of Hazel Sedgwick. It was very expensive. It was almost 400 bucks for this side. I got 15 belts out of it. So thank God, you know, it, it's funny because I bought this uh, strap cutter a while ago and it was pretty expensive. And I thought, ah, oh. once I set it up and everything, I started using it. I'm like, ah, oh, crap, did I just waste my money? Am I ever going to use this thing? Because my simple hand strap cutter works really well. And uh, thankfully, this is the machine to make belts with. So I'm gonna be making belts with my Weaver Leather Master Tool strap cutter. Very happy about that now that I found a product that I could make with it. We've got two models, the Marauder, which is the quick release, and then this is the Stockade belt. The Stockade is a much more of a standard. We've got a nice chunky, thick, square center heel bar buckle here with basically the same hardware as the Marauder. We've got two number nine raw brass rivets, a brass keeper there. So this is going to be in Hazel Sedgwick, one of the, one of my favorite leathers in the world. It's definitely my favorite belt leather, but it's also really good for cuffs. I'll also be offering single cuffs in this leather. Uh, these are the best cuffs I've ever made, by the way. Really love these cuffs. They're thick. These are 10 to 12 ounces, so very thick, highly, highly waxed, highly, highly sturdy, super sturdy, super waxy. You could make armor out of this stuff. I'm not kidding. This stuff is some of the most beautiful, robust, yet durable leather I've ever worked with. I wax the edges myself by hand, and then I could do teardrop eyelets, but I think for now I'm gonna offer standard holes as my whole offerings. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about my belts. You know, I was nervous to get into it, but I hope to develop it out to where I'm doing something really unique. I, I also love Angel at Nobleman's Apothecary. Angel is doing some great belts as well. He's actually hand dyeing his stuff. That's really unique. So those two guys, I love those guys seriously, and uh, I consider them friends. I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. When you get into business, that's why in my recent boot talk with, with Frank's boots, I asked him like, how does he deal with competition among his peers? Because it's like, that's a hard thing to navigate. You know, I'm not, I'm, I wanna be friends, and I feel like, you know, it's like restaurants, right? You can be friends, at, like in Little Italy, live right outside of Baltimore, and in Little Italy, a lot of those restaurant owners are friends with each other, you know? They're competing businesses technically, but they have that heritage that goes back hundreds, of, you know, 150 years in Little Italy, Baltimore, and uh, I see competition among boot, maker, boot makers, and I see competition among belt makers and things like this, and the way I'm starting to see it is it's kind of like running a restaurant, right? You're gonna have competition, but there's no reason you guys, you can't be friends, right? So that's kind of the way I see it. Everybody does their own, puts their own spin on things. And so that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm, I really want to maintain good friendships with these guys because the more makers, the better, not the less. And it's kind of like content creators too. It's like, I think a lot of content creators get it in their heads that they're trying to be the only one or they're trying to be the go-to. And it's like, no, it's actually better if there's a lot of options, you know what I mean? More options, the better. That's what I think anyways. And uh, also, I'll be stamping my Dale's Leatherworks logo on the front. Now, let me know what you think about that. If you want me to make you a belt and you want that omitted or you want that on the back side, the reverse side, I could do that easily. I'm in no way sort of stuck on the idea of putting my logo right there. I could easily omit that. But one of the good things is 
when you close the belt, it's covered anyways. So you, you only see it when it's hanging up anyways. And I really like my logo. Not, I guess I am biased. I do like that logo a little bit. So, <laughs> okay. So as far as belt sizing goes, I should cover this too. Any of your standard pants that you buy from a retailer in America, take that size and go up one. So like me, I buy 32 waist pants from J Crew. I would then buy the 34, just one size up. I have that size and guidance on my website. What I'm gonna do is, just because you wear a 32 inch waist pants does not mean your waist is 32 inches. Your, your waist is probably actually more like 34 inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, let's say you pick a 34, I'm gonna take that 34, I'm gonna put seven holes in there to make sure that it, you know it fits you. Whether you gain weight, lose weight, whatever, it should fit. If you need to send it back to have it adjusted or whatever, I'm totally cool with that too, um, but for now, my standard guidance is go up one size from your standard waist size, and that should that should work. So if you, once again, you wear a 30 pant, buy the 32. If you wear a 32, buy the 34, so on and so forth. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. What do you think about my picks for this year's Stitch Down Patina Thunderdome? What are you guys doming? Please leave me your comments in the description below. And I will also leave a link to all my favorite shops down there too, so click those, check those out. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you all in my next video.